uh, we want to talk about when you read, when you know what's it, you have the purpose, the question, and now you're starting to read for what's important information. Then the question becomes, what is important information if you're reading a, a Matt H book like this one on the screen? And for mathematicians, those are often quantities and relationships. So, but here's the problem. Kids generally don't pay attention to quantities and relationships when they read a word problem. They almost always just pay attention to the numbers. And that's not bad as long as, as soon as they see a number, they ask themselves this question or something like it. Is this number telling me something about a quantity or is it describing a relationship? That is, is this number telling me how much of something I have? Is it a value for a quantity? Or is this number comparing two things? Is it describing a relationship? Because in math, numbers have two jobs. They either tell you how much of something you have, that is their value for a quantity, or they compare things. That is, they're describing a relationship. So if kids see numbers, that's fine, but immediately we want them to habitualize asking themselves this question and determine the importance of that number. Interpret that number in terms of the work it's doing in the problem. So let's take a look at those two numbers in four different situations. Take about a half a minute and ask yourself, in each case, is that number telling you something about a quantity or is that number describing a relationship? Yeah, so that first one, Grace has seven cookies. Give me a quantity or relationship. Go ahead, and put it in the chat. Well, seeing a bunch of quantities come in, cues come in. Right, it's telling me how many cookies I have. It's the value for a quantity. How about Amy has seven more cookies than Grace? Quantity or relationship? Relationship. Right, it's comparing two quantities. It's comparing the number of cookies Grace has and the number of cookies Amy has. Same number, same context, different job. And we need kids to be able to interpret numbers in word problems in terms of their job. And so let's look over at Grace ran a half a mile. Quantity or relationship? Yeah, quantity, it's how far I ran. Amy ran half as far as Grace. Relationship, beautiful. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? As we say up here in Boston. So if a number isn't a quantity, what the heck is a quantity? Well, a quantity is something that you can count or measure. And we love to give students these two sentence starters. The number of, if it's something you can count or the amount of, if it's something you can measure. I can count the number of cookies Grace has. I can measure the amount of distance Amy ran, right? That sentence starter will help students name quantities. A quantity answers the question, how many or how much? And here's the cool part. A quantity has three parts to it. It has a value like seven or a half or two pi, or if we don't know what the value is, let the number of cookies Amy ate be X. Or maybe we're in third grade and instead of X, it's an open square on the page or a line with the question mark. Sometimes we know the value, sometimes we don't. But if we don't know the value, it doesn't mean the quantity is not there. The quantity also has a unit. You know, it can be cookies, it can be miles, it can be glasses of Chardonnay. And the quantity has a sign. It's either positive or it's negative. So quantity is a much bigger idea than a number. Although a number can be a clue that a quantity is lurking somewhere. So let's, um, let's test drive this idea about quantities. Here's another little situation. 
Denise found four nickels in the car, 32 cents in a room and 21 pennies and one quarter in her desk drawer. What I would love for you to do is take a minute and identify all of the quantities in this situation. So ask yourself, what can I count in this situation? And when you answer that question, start with the number of. I'll give you about 30, 40 seconds of individual work time. So I'm seeing folks start to put, starting to put quantities in the, in the chat. Beautiful. Number of nickels, number of pennies. Yeah. Beautiful. Excellent. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of quantities here. You all, you named the number of nickels and these found in her cars, the number of pennies she found in her desk, the number of quarters in her desk drawer, the total number of coins she found in her desk drawer. Some quantities, some quantities are explicitly stated and some are implied. Right? Uh, the amount of money she found in her room, the amount of money she found in her car, the amount of money she found in her desk drawer, the total amount of money she found. Right? We're talking about nickels and pennies, but sometimes those numbers are the number of coins we have, and sometimes those numbers are the values or the amounts of those coins. Tricky, right? And those of you who ever taught elementary school, very tricky <laughs> uh, for kids. And if you're not reading for quantities and you're just stopping at the four and the 32, you don't get to this nuance. Are we talking about its value or the number we have or its worth? And then there are words like quarter and it has a value of 25 cents, but it's just the word quarter there. And we don't mean one fourth, but maybe we do one fourth of a dollar. It's a nice relationship. So if kids only read for numbers and keywords, then this is the kind of work that we get from them often. It's like kind of classic. We see work from kids where they circle the numbers in a problem and they underline the key words. And then they grab those numbers and they grab those key words and they do something, right? A bunch of numbers, the word all. So we must be adding them together. In fact, if there's more than two numbers, you usually are always adding them together and you just throw them all together and you get an answer. And that I would argue is work from someone who a student who is just paying attention to the numbers and not the job that the number is doing in the sentence, not the value it's really representing. And so we wanna to try to help students pause and make sense of those numbers and keywords and problem statements, right? We want them to be good math readers and good math readers look beyond the numbers and keywords in a problem statement to the quantities and relationships those numbers and keywords represent. And really all it takes is what's the job that number's doing? Ask yourself, what can I count? What can I measure? Ask yourself, is that number a value for a quantity or is it describing a relationship, right? The kinds of thinking and reasoning you need to do to interpret in math, like a mathematician. So then the question becomes, if good, that's what good readers do, then how the heck do we get readers to be, or students to be good readers? And we're gonna say, read a word problem multiple times for specific purposes each time and read for quantities and relationships. And that is what the three reads instructional routine is designed to do. And we shared